Hi, my name is Colin Overway. I'm a certified financial planner, owner of a virtual financial planning company, and for the past two years have been recognized by Investopedia as a top 100 most influential advisors in the country. The video you're about to watch is a live recording that I did through TikTok or YouTube. Just as a friendly reminder, the opinions expressed in this video are my own and not the official opinions of Advised Wealth Management or its employees. None of the information in this video should be taken as investment advice. It's very possible some of the stuff I say is inaccurate because I'm doing this live and I don't have the capacity to go back, rewatch this, and edit it. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. Daniel, thanks for calling in, man. What's happening? Hey, brother. Hey, you know, I follow you. Um, I've been calling you for a while. I'm an older guy, but uh, I've asked you a few questions. You've helped me out, and I'm, this will help some of the questions that I have as well. Um, I've watched you do other people's... Uh, um, portfolios if you will and some advice and you're rocking it my man so awesome um, i really appreciate it well i really appreciate the kind words where are you calling in from daniel i currently live in new jersey new jersey nice okay so we're on the east coast it's 10 o'clock over there that's right you're uh you're the night owl trying to to gain some uh financial planning knowledge i love it absolutely nice well education education Love that, Daniel. So how, how young are you, man? So I'm 54. 54 years young. Okay. I, I, I am fine. I got you on my laptop, so I got the video portion up, so I, I can see it. Nice. Okay. Awesome. That is great. Okay. All right. 54. And uh, is this financial planning just for yourself, or is there a partner involved? It is solely me. No children. Just, just myself. Awesome. Okay. And what are we expecting to earn for income this year? So um, I'm already retired from the military. So I have my military pension and I have a, a VA disability rating and that comes in. So um, that's at 5865 75 cents a month. That's all in. That's Well, first off, thank you so much for your service, Daniel. Really appreciate you, man. Oh, my pleasure. And um, so I recently left my job on my, on my will. I was working for... Uh, a telecommunications company where I was making some decent coin. Um, but I said, you know, I, corporate world isn't for me. So here I am. So I just want to see where I am on track and we'll have a couple follow up questions that I've asked you in the chats before in terms of having an advisor versus not having an advisor, that kind of thing. So okay, that's kind of where I'm a little hung up on, but sure. Makes a lot of sense. So, uh, what, what that income? Correct me if I was if I'm right here or, or wrong. Sorry, uh, five thousand eight hundred sixty-five. That's income right now per month. That's correct. Yep. Okay. And is that from a pension? It, it's guaranteed for life here. That is correct. So it the the um, both of them. So so to break it down, my military pension is. Uh, 2243 and my VA disability is 3621. It increases the same rate as Social Security. Nice. So like this year we got we got the uh, 8.6 or 8.7% increase, right? So I think what Social Security averages 3% a year, give or take? Yeah, ballpark. Yep. It, it, it's usually just a tad behind inflation, but it does a pretty darn good job. It tracks most of uh, most of CPI. Perfect. So 5,800 65 coming in. Um, yeah. Any other income sources in the future? I'm not going to project that I will. I am looking. If something opens up, great. Um, but I kind of want to just go off of what I've got with the known, right? So sure. my goal is, I mean, ideally to find, you know, something to keep me busy, bringing another couple thousand dollars a month, I'd be, you know, perfectly fine. But I like to play conservative in terms of worst case scenarios and go with what I know. Gotcha. Okay. So... How are we feeling right now per month? Do we have some money left over or are things pretty tight? I do have money left over um, and I'm still, and I'm actually able to invest um, currently $615 a month. I'm investing into a brokerage account. I could probably increase it to a thousand dollars, which would put me above the 15% um, range, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I've got another just a little bit more than a year left on a car payment. Once that comes in, then I'll definitely be able to increase that part. So um, right now my living expenses are roughly, I would say uh, $3,500, between $35 and $4,000 a month. So 
So it's leaving me, you know, a good sixteen, fifteen hundred dollars that, and that's including that investment, that six hundred and fifteen dollar investment. Okay, so four thousand a month we're we're spending, including the six hundred dollar a month investment. Correct. Okay, so you got fifty eight hundred coming in, four thousand going out. Where's the uh, eighteen hundred going, or are, is that the gross income, and you still got to pay some taxes? No, nope. so that I don't pay any taxes. Um, so it's kind of just. Uh, I, in fact, I just got. I mean, it's paying off. Uh, this month is paying off some credit cards from last month. Um, I'm pretty much debt free. We I, I went to Turks and Caicos for a week, so okay, you know, it racked up a little bit. But but that so that fifteen hundred dollars is kind of there. Um, just as an, you know, to go into the emergency fund of the savings account. Um, you know, I've recently bought a house, so um, I don't want you know, in case something comes up, right? Um, is that, that you know, as far as that goes, you know, repairs or whatever. So um, that's kind of where that is as well. I'm an avid golfer, so I'm saving for golf season once uh, the weather gets warmer, right? So love to hear that. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that 5,800 comes in. 4,000 goes out in the form of spending or saving to that brokerage. And then there's about that like 1500 ish left over. And that's just piling up into the emergency fund. Correct. Okay. Do you think we're going to spend that emergency fund at the end of the year? Cause you know, golf season's coming up and maybe it's a little more of an expensive time. I, I mean, I would, I would suspect, so I play in a, in a, uh, in a league, if you will. So, I mean, I can't say going too crazy. I mean, it, it'll be, probably be about, I wouldn't say the whole thing. I'd, I'd say about 500 bucks or so, five, 600 bucks. So I'd still have about, you know, $1,000 or so left over. Yeah. Okay. Well, what are we worried about? Why aren't we just going to cruise on that pension and say thanks? We're good to go. Because I, I, I do like to do other things. I, I do like to travel, right? So this is kind of limiting, you know, that aspect of it. Okay. Um, New Jersey's not my forever home either. I'm not from here originally, but um, it is not my forever home. So I'm also looking like if I, you know, move, if I sell here, what do I have? You know, uh, what availability do I have, um, you know, for a mortgage wherever I go, right? So, that, you know, whether I, that's the, the good thing about for the VA, I use a VA home loan, so I don't have to put any money down. Mm -hmm. um, so that saves a lot. My uh, VA disability prevents me from having to pay property taxes in most states. Um, definitely New Jersey, I don't pay property taxes, so that's a huge plus for this area. Um, that is I just, awesome. You know, trying to build that, that, continue to build that nest egg that's in my investment portfolio as well, which brings me to that question, and, and you know, I can share with you what I've got on the investment side, but it brings to the question about, you know, I use Fidelity and I have managed accounts and I have, you know, an advisor and I, and I kind of question, you know, listening, you know, I follow you and, uh, you know, what was it? The million dollar man or whatever that guy, the other gentleman that, that you, you guys talked the other night, a few nights back last week or whatever it was. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, in, you know, I listen to, you know, and I, I also follow humble dollar. You know, mm -hmm. and I go on there where they talk about, you know, asking the question, do you need an advisor or not? Most people are saying for what I, what my investments are at is a no, but I question the market in that when I, you know, because they're, they're constantly, they're doing index funds all day long, right? But they're moving and, you know, they're shaking, they're doing, okay, they're moving at this time and this time. And I'm wondering, are they, you know, are they helping, right? Or, you know, cause are they, you know, obviously they can, I would imagine based off their analysis and stuff, they can project you know, what's happening in the markets and grab this index fund or, you know, put more into this or vice versa versus just using like say VTI or VO and just, you know, sticking it in those three or four funds, right? Like I don't, you know, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. So. Yeah. The, uh, this is coming straight from an advisor who used to manage money and I made my living by pretending that what we did was complicated and that you needed me. Um, I've then switched my model into, uh, flat fees and I, uh, I don't believe that everyone needs an advisor and, uh, the services that I provide are much more in, in detail than just purely managing portfolios. 
Um, I think if an investment management advisor only, like if the only value that they're bringing you is managing assets, to me, the biggest value there is just behavioral aspect. So, you know, for example, if, if you get scared when the market's down and sell your portfolio, well, paying an advisor 1% fee was probably worth it. You know, that if you if that is going to prohibit you from do, making a big mistake like that. However, if you believe that you understand the allocation, you know what your goals are, you have good timelines, like I don't know if you've watched any of my content with the stair steps and you kind of identify when you need the money and how it should be invested. Um, you really don't. I mean, these guys don't know where the market's going any better than the market does. So anyone that claims that they're going to be getting you better market performance because they know what the market does and they're trading and changing allocations, I, I think that's, uh, that's a bunch of BS. So you could, in a lot of cases, if you're in a buy and hold pattern, you know, you could buy a few ETFs and just let it sit there. And more than likely, I, you, you know, the goal is to get market performance. Um, and very, very few right. advisors can outperform the market over long periods of time. Like we're talking 95% of professional investors cannot beat the market over long periods of time or fail to historically. Sure. So that's not a very good yeah, start, that's, right? <laughs> that's the, yeah, that's what you've been sharing. That's what I've been following. So, um, and that's, you know, like I said, in humble dollar and stuff, that's kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. Now, advisors could be worth a lot in a lot of different cases, you know, helping you figure out how much home you can afford, how should that money be invested between now and when you purchase that home? Like you might have more complexities than just stick it in a growth portfolio and try to get good returns over the next 10 years. Um, you know, there, there could be a lot more complexity, but if you're not having conversations like that with those folks, then they're not doing that anyway. You know, they're not doing those planning services and providing that context anyway. Right. And that's, you know, for me, I don't, like I said, I don't have any children. I don't foresee myself having any children. Um, so there's not any planning that, you know, the only, the only planning that I really have is whatever my next physical move is and, you know, how to go ahead and purchase that next, you know, that next home, whatever that, you know, whatever that might be. So how much you got over at Fidelity? So my total uh, account is t currently 297. 75 so i have um i have a individual investment account kind of like what you talk about your your gambling account if you will yep um so that one's at uh 9204 uh i have a, a rollover ira that i moved over from my previous employer that's at 111732 i have the individual brokerage account which is at uh, 83,780 and then the Roth IRA, which is at, uh, 92,357, which is another reason why I kind of want to just find some sort of, uh, job. Like I said, I'm not looking to bring in, you know, break the bank or, or, or work extremely hard, but mm -hmm. I still want to be able to contribute to the Roth IRA. And obviously I can't do that if I'm not working. And the, the bizarre part is with the, so this is an interesting for, and I don't know if there's any other veterans that are out here, or, you know, that are on here, or, or maybe you'll come across them. But something that I learned when I was working for the telecommunication, um, I had to do the backdoor Roth IRA because they included my uh, military pension as part of income for those calculations. However, they don't use it as far as being able to contribute to the Roth IRA. Mm, interesting. But, which is really bizarre. They use it for one, but they don't use it for the other, you know? Yeah. Modified adjusted gross income is a weird number. I, there's about five different ways to calculate it. It's pretty odd. So, Daniel, I mean, it sounds like, hey, we got 300 grand. We got 6,000 a month of income that goes up with inflation. 
currently retired. Main goal is to travel more and buy a house in the future. Um, I mean, honestly, it sounds like this uh, future mortgage payment just needs to be reasonably within your current uh, budget. I mean, it, it sounds like, honestly, you're, you're in a pretty darn good spot. I mean, obviously, we could do some inflation adjusted numbers and, and kind of run that. But I mean, overall, you're, you're looking pretty solid here, man. You're, you're spending less than you make. I mean, to me, I would probably just spend that full 6,000 bucks or, I mean, if we're trying to, of course, I think the biggest hurdle here is just knowing what your future property is going to look like. I mean, that's, that's of course, the number one variable here uh, and what that future mortgage is going to be. But, uh, I mean, for example, if we did a simple 4% withdrawal rule and we got 300,000 here, 300,000 times 0 0.04 divided by 12, I mean, your portfolio could easily start giving you about a thousand dollars a month of extra income, and you're already making six. I mean, it seems like uh, this is a, a pretty solid situation. Right. Okay. That was yeah, and that's you know, in running it with them, which I did, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they're saying the same thing, but I, again, I wanted to get your take more on the, uh, you know, having, having that advisor and the managed, um, portfolio like I do. Yeah. Right? So, um, and, and that was, you know, um, I, I just, it's, it's a weird feeling because I, I mean, I would say my knowledge, my knowledge is obvious, is pretty novice. Um, it's increased with, you know, uh, people such as yourself educating us and sharing, which truly appreciated, and um, you know, opening a bunch, of, you know, um, just you know, and, and like I said, I, I just started subscribing to the Humble Dollar, which opens up a lot of uh, educational tools, and um, so it's just you know, it's one of the things that unfortunately, at least when I, my educational, you know, elementary, high school, college, like you know, like, well, obviously unless you took financial classes in college, but they don't teach this stuff, you know, in the school system, right? Like no. they might now a little bit more, but you know, back then when, you know, when I was, you know, nobody ever talked about this. Right? So. They, they really don't, Daniel. I mean, I graduated from a, a university that brags about being a top 20 public university for a finance degree. And uh, I got my finance degree. They didn't talk about the, the word Roth IRA was never mentioned in the curriculum. So it's uh, and it certainly wasn't in high school either. I think it's just starting to to maybe, you know, creep up in the and catch up in the curriculum. But I mean, it is uh, it's almost a, a epidemic in itself of financial illiteracy, and uh, it's such a shame because money touches every part of our life. You know, people a lot of times think that you got to be so greedy to want to learn about money. And that's just not the case. I think if you want to be the biggest philanthropist in the world, learning about money and how to invest is is so so important. Yeah, I agree. It, it, and then you know, even like in the military, you know, for me, they they changed it, right? So you know, you have got they they have now kind of a my understanding is a. Um, a version of like a 401k because there'd be, you know, guys that come in, they do four years, eight years, 10 years, and then they leave, they have nothing. Maybe they did, maybe they did the, uh, the thrift savings plan, but that would be it. Now they're, mm -hmm. I think they're taking away the military pension is the way that I have it, but they're doing this type of 401k thing, which at least it gives somebody, but even then they didn't really, you know, um, even, you know, my military career, even, you know, I came into money, I, I inherited money, um, when my mom had passed away while I was serving and even, you know, with the advising that I was getting, nobody really talked about it even then, you know, you know, was, I, I think I really started the Roth IRA was where I started contributing was probably about two, maybe two years before I retired, wow. you know, which, you know, something I could have done throughout my entire 22 years. You know, so. So it sounds like maybe you're for a lot of time on my end, right? So I think you're, you know, your platform, and I'll leave you with this, and I appreciate your input, but, you know, your platform is pretty awesome. You're, you know, I know you kind of, 
cater, you know, a lot of the younger people are coming on and you're, you know, with the questions and we're catching them at these pivotal times. I'm 54, you know, really I started investing at 42-ish, right? 40, at 40, that's, you know, that's a long time that, of where I could have, you know, I just wasted, right? So you're, you're on it. All right, everyone. He listened to fr from from Daniel from uh, someone who is is in their fifties saying, "Hey, I could have started earlier. Potentially had more wealth. You know, let that sink from your brain to your heart and actually make some decisions. Open up an account. Start investing. You don't need to have millions or thousands of dollars to get started. You can start with uh, ten bucks a month, fifty bucks a month. Just squirrel away anything yep. you can." Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Daniel, it has been a real pleasure. I feel like there, you still, I can kind of sense it in your voice that maybe you don't quite believe me. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know your situation. I don't know what that future home purchase is going to look like. Um, you know, if uh, all I can say is that if we were working together, we would be running the analysis of, of what that, that future purchase would look like. Um, so I'm kind of selling myself just a little bit here because what you're describing is really up the, the, in the wheelhouse of what I do. And, uh, and if you're paying your advisor right now, one or one and a half percent, you might actually be paying them more than what my flat 3,600 fee would even be. Okay. So I gotta, I gotta give myself a pitch here, right? I gotta sell a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's about, it's about chemistry too. Like I said, I, you know, um, I've had I've had I've had various advisors, which is one of the reasons. This, and, and I'll tell you, this is one of the reasons that I went um, on on this advisor side specifically because what I did not like was when I would call in Fidelity or before them I had USAA, and you're getting a new person every time. Right? Yeah. They don't know your story. They don't know you know what whatever it is your goal. And that's kind of why I gravitated towards an advisor because I wanted you know somebody to know who you know, who, who I am, what my goals are, at least that's what I felt is the need to ensure that I'm meeting what I, my objectives are. You know, like I, this house I've got, I mean, I know if I sold it right now based off, I mean, I bought it in 2020. Um, and because I'm using the VA loan, I, I got it for a song because it, they, it's what it was appraised at. It's not what it was, you know, what, what the guy was asking for. Um, so it's already on, you know, if I were to sell it now, I'm already, I could already sell it for about almost hundred K more than what I paid for it. Um, if I sold today. That worked so, out pretty well um, for you. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to sell today. I, I'm just trying to that position right now. So yeah, I might look into you, um, and you know, and, and give it a whirl. You never know. Nice. You ever get up to Michigan to play golf by chance? Uh, I have not. Done Michigan. Well, we went. I, I grew up in Vancouver and Toronto, so okay. Um, I was up for a Detroit um, Blue Jays uh, Detroit game a couple years back. We went and played. Uh, I don't even know the course, but um, no, I haven't played up in Michigan yet. The closest one, well, not close, but the biggest one that I did up north in Wisconsin. I did Whistling Straits up there. Beautiful past Memorial Day weekend. That was pretty awesome. So. That's cool. That's cool. I got a a sixteen person golf outing that uh, we meet up in Michigan, um, and uh, we we play four rounds in two days, and it is an absolute blast. Blast. It's uh, I think this year will be our seventh year doing it. That's awesome. So big golf fan as well. Um, well, Daniel, is there anything else yeah, I can I can play, try to help you with? <clears throat> No, I think, man, I think you, you know, again, I think uh, you, you it reassured me where, where I'm at, which is kind of what I was hoping for. Um, and, and, you know, I like to get, you know, various different people's points of view that are in the profession that, you know, again, you're an independent, you don't know anything about me, you, you know, versus working with Fidelity, right? Working with that company, they, they have an agenda, right? Um, you know, they're, they're in it to make money too. Um, so, you know, that's again, where I ask about, you know, the, like I said, they're, they're just moving the index funds. They're, they're changing here and there and they're, you know, buying these ones and then selling buy And so I'm like, well, you know, and it, it, I mean, my, the, my portfolio for the month, I mean, I'm, you know, this month I'm up like, uh, 17% for the month. 
Wow. Uh, for the month of January, right? So, right. And that's where I, I that's why I might, would, would the normal ones have done, you know, if I just did it on my own? Probably not, but. Um, well, I'll tell you that the S and P is up like eleven or like ten or eleven percent on the year. So, um, I don't know what emerging markets are. Actually, I should probably take a peek here. Um, that would be really interesting here. Um, Vanguard. I don't watch the market all day every day. That's not my value add. And anyone who says that they do, I think they're kind of fooling themselves. <laughs> Um, or they're trying to protect their income and pretending to make it complicated. I'm so negative on these advisors, aren't I? <laughs> See, like when I look at my Roth IRA, my Roth IRA total gains um, is 18.62%. Now, here's my question. Does that include when I'm putting money in? I have no idea. I don't know what the they, okay. they could if they did calculate it with what money is putting in that's not correct that's not how my reports work um but okay. uh it's possible I've, I sure never, hope, I've never asked i don't know i sure hope not right um i'm looking at one more um i be, i use a couple of different main etfs here and just looking up how each of these are doing year to date. Um, just because 17%, that tells me that you're probably in. I, I also do wonder, you should look at what the six month is because if you're up 17%, most of those stocks that are popping really yeah. hard right now are a lot of the tech stocks. And that might mean that you got crushed over the last year or six months. And it'd be cu I'd be curious to learn what you did over the last like year two or three, um, because international XUS, so that's like Western Europe and the UK, they're up 7% year to date. Yeah. Uh, the international emerging markets, so like China, Brazil, they're up about 5% year to date. And then the SP 500 is up uh, about 9% year to date. So if you're up 17, that tells me that you have a strong allocation to something, uh, something a little uh, heavy weighted. Uh, I'm guessing it's tech, and uh, I don't know. I, all I know is that it's uh, that's a little bit scary because yeah, you won today, but uh, what are you gonna do over the future? Yeah, I mean, as a whole. Um I believe, you know, for all of last year, I think it was down like 19% as a whole. Okay, well, that's about what the but market I just was. Started, right, and I just started the, and so I was doing a managed, the managed account only, um, you know, for the last uh, three years. It wasn't until actually um, when I left my job that I went and got the individual advisor just to make sure I was on, you know, on track, kind of like what I'm doing with you. Yep. Um, and, you know, and then like I said, he, and I don't know if there's a, and that's something I want to call it. I don't know if there's a difference in pricing, what the, you know, having that individual advisor, cause then it was weird. Cause then I got him and then I got like two other people that he associates with. They're calling me and they're, you know, they're sending me booklets with my analysis and, all these different things, right? So, um, versus just the the managed account in and itself, going, you know, which is based off of my risk tolerance. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much more or less that one does over the other, or how much I'm paying. I don't know. So, that's definitely something I need to look at. Yeah, knowing what you're paying the advisor, and uh, if the only value that they're adding you uh, is uh, changing around ETFs, I would. Uh, I would be a little skeptical. All right, sounds good, man. Hey, I appreciate your time. Let me let you go and eat um, while you finish educating us. And uh, I appreciate your time and your input. Sounds good, Daniel. Let's stay in touch, man. Uh, you can send me messages either on Twitter or Instagram. It's kind of my uh, uh,
platform that I'm the most uh, active on for, for direct messages. TikTok is kind of tough. The direct messages are uh, a little bit piled up with all the other notifications. It's not as easy of a texting platform. Absolutely. All right, I'll be in touch. Cool. Best of luck, man, and uh, hit them straight this season. Absolutely. Thanks, man. See ya. Bye-bye. You as well. Nice. Well, that was a ton of fun. Good to meet a friend. Nice guy. He's in a pretty good spot. I mean, the one thing I was a little bit, uh, a little bit skeptical on was the income here. I mean, if we have, uh, 5,865, And he's saying that total living expenses are 4,000. Is this backwards, by the way? Can someone tell me? I think I'm good. All right, so uh, 5,865. Uh, 5, um, and then he said that they were saving 600. So. Saving six hundred, and then the total expenses are four thousand. So could we just say thirty four hundred in living expenses? So let's just put that in red. Expenses. I mean, what I would want to do if I was working with this person is hold their feet to the fire. Because we got to know then, do you actually have 1800 left over? Is your bank account growing by 1800 bucks per month? And be able to track that. Because what this really tells us is, are your living expenses indeed, indeed, 3400 And then that's going to be able to tell us everything we need to know about how much home you can afford. Do you have enough money? You know, there's still quite a few moving parts here. You know, managing 300,000 is great. Um, but quite honestly, understanding the living expenses and do you enjoy it? You know, I'd really want to know how far we can push the envelope, uh, to, to really make sure that even if he doesn't have 1800 left over, maybe a thousand of it is going into living expenses and living expenses are 4,400. That's probably okay. It probably is. Now we just need to run the numbers of how much home can he afford and what does that 300,000 get you in retirement? So that's kind of what I'd be thinking about running this and just making sure that we know what we have for our regular living expenses. I'd maybe set up a travel budget. Sounds like traveling is one of the big expenses that he enjoys, but maybe just feeling like he's held back on. So that's probably one thing that uh, I would set aside is like, all right, we got our automated living expense budget. And then, you know, what's just save 500 per month or a thousand per month into the travel budget. And in the months that you don't travel, great. The travel budget increases, it rolls over to the next month. But over the course of the year, we can only afford to spend $10,000 on golf trips or travel in general. And once we can kind of wrap our mind around that, now we know that we have really solid data. Now we know that we can, uh, we can lean into how much can that 300,000 get you? How much home can you afford and make a much more accurate and, and confident decision? All right. Well, hey, thank you so much. If you want to be a caller in the future, go to my TikTok profile, click on the link, the beacons link, and then you'll have a link to my Instagram. Go ahead and send me a direct message and say, yo, I want to be a future caller. I'll get you hooked up for tomorrow. We are going live and bringing on another caller at 7.30 uh, Eastern time or 4.30 Pacific. I might be a little bit late here. I might be five minutes late to that for tomorrow because I have a meeting that ends right at uh, at 7.30 Eastern. So uh, might be a tad late, but we'll be there. We'll be able to take one live caller and uh, learn about financial planning together.